Good afternoon. This is Kathy Nickham. I'm the education director for the DPC Ed Center, and I'd like to welcome you today to our webinar on your search for a living kidney donor. And before we get started, I'd like to go through a couple of housekeeping slides. Uh, thoughts, please. Next slide. Kathy, I think your audio may have cut out. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I'll start again. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Kathy Nickham. I am the Education Director for the DPC Education Center, and I'd like to welcome you to our webinar today on Searching for a Living Kidney Donor. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a couple of housekeeping issues um, and just to let you know that all of your uh, lines are muted. Hannah, can you move to the next slide, please? And am I muted again? No, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Could you move to the next slide, please? Um, I am on the slide for Harvey's introduction. Harvey, can you see the slide about yourself? Yes. Okay, I think I'm going to need to um, probably leave and come back because I still have the um, very first slide on mine. Just the <laughs> slide. So I'm going to introduce Harvey. Um, just a couple of housekeeping things. I'll just go over those. You'll be muted. Please feel free to ask questions or make comments in the chat box. Uh, for the most part, we'll be answering them at the end of the session, um, although they may get answered during the session um, as needed or as we are able to. Uh, the recording will be available in approximately a week, and the slides will also be available to you at that point in time. And um, we have a feedback form that Hannah will put in the chat box that you can link to, and it's already there. Uh, please fill that out at the end of the program. We appreciate your comments and your suggestions for future topics. And so at this point, it's my pleasure to introduce to you um, our speaker today, who is Harvey Mysell. Harvey has agreed to return, review, and update information that he shared with us uh, a few years ago when he was part of our webinar program. Harvey's a two-time kidney transplant recipient. He founded the Living Kidney Donors Network after he realized that those in need of a kidney transplant were getting the information they needed to become successful at finding a living donor. Through his presentations, his workshops, his webcast, and his personal consultation, Harvey has helped hundreds through the transplant process. I know that the information that he shares with you today will help you in your journey to find a, a living donor. It is my pleasure at this point to introduce you to Harvey myself. Harvey? Thank you, Kathy, for the uh, invitation, uh, Hannah, for all of the uh, technical work you've done, and everyone at uh, DPC to uh, really invite me and uh, allow me the opportunity to to reach more people and and uh, who are in need of a kidney transplant and and help them. Uh, a little little more background um, of myself. You, you heard I'm a two time transplant recipient. I uh, have the condition called polycystic kidney disease (PKD). Uh, it's a genetic condition. Uh, as I kid with people, I picked the wrong parents. Um, but it is a condition where cysts grow in your kidneys, and for many people, the cysts get so large uh, that you need a kidney transplant because your kidney function declines. Uh, I was very fortunate that my wife donated to me in 2007. We both did extremely well after the transplant. I had, uh, I'm in Chicago. I was evaluated at three transplant centers, did a lot of research, and as Cassie, Kathy mentioned, I saw there was a void in the community, and, and the void was 
helping people understand how they can be successful at having a, 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 a living kidney transplant experience. Uh, so I started a nonprofit organization. I've done workshops uh, uh, with transplant centers, dialysis clinics, nonprofits all, all over the U.S. Um, uh, and, and helping people in this way. And, and basically you'll hear and hopefully view some of the information that I've uh, put together in a video that I'll talk about. Um, basically what I've always tried to do is reach as many people as I can and I teach people how to fish, okay? I, I, I can't do the work for them. I can't help hundreds of people that way, but I put together materials uh, that I think is extremely helpful. And, and really it puts together what other people have done uh, for success. So my journey uh, took a little bit of a, a, a turn. Uh, three years after my transplant, I developed a virus that attacked the kidney and um, after it's called the BK virus. Uh, and then so five years after the first transplant, um, I needed a second one. Um, and so I stopped doing the work that I was doing and, and I was following, you know, what, what I needed to do. It's a lot easier to tell people uh, how to go about it, but I, I did. And it was difficult for me uh, as it is for everyone to get started. Uh, but I did. And uh, the, the short uh, story of the long journey was uh, one day I was on Facebook. I saw someone posted an article about organ donation, and I reached out to this individual. She happens to be in Seattle. I'm in Chicago. I was curious why she did it. She said, I just was thought it was an interesting article. I have uh, uh, not involved in the community. So uh, I told her my story, and as I told many people, and I thought that was that. Stephen, who lives outside of Detroit, uh, who ended up being my donor, uh, saw her article also and said I, you know, that he had been interested in learning more about organ donation um, and you know, could she be of help? And she said, no, I really can't, but why don't you reach out to Harvey? He has a nonprofit organization. He needs a, a kidney transplant. And like I said, it's a long story, but Stephen and I were involved in a three-way paired exchange. And many of you might be thinking, that's a miracle. You know, uh, I'm in Chicago, uh, she's in Seattle, Stephen's in Detroit but they're all neighbors. They're all electronic neighbors. In fact, probably I communicate more with uh, my electronic neighbors than I do with my physical neighbors. So the world really has changed in terms of uh, how things happen. And, and my experience with Stephen is becoming more the norm than the exception in terms of having other people help you uh, in the process. And I'll, I'll talk certainly uh, a little more about that. So uh, often I talk about the whole process of organ donation. Uh, I'm not gonna spend much time on that today. We're really gonna get into the guts of how you have your donor find you. And I like to use that term and you'll hear that term a lot in my video series because that's the reality of what happens. I've spoken to hundreds of donors, hundreds of recipients, and I've asked the recipients, how did you ask the donor? And they'd say, I didn't ask my donor. And the same thing with the donor. I'd say to the donor, how did the recipient ask you to donate? And no one really asks. It's all about telling your story. So that's one of the concerns that I had at the very beginning. And it's one of the concerns that I hear from other people in the process. So hopefully we'll uh, cover some uh, material. Please use the chat box if you have a question or raise your hand, might be easier to uh, see you in that way. So uh, let's get started with the material. So, so the, the search for a living kidney donor really is a search and it is a campaign, okay? You need to develop this campaign, okay? And I'll talk about other campaigns that you probably been involved with uh, in the past that's similar to this. So you really can call upon your experiences. Uh, next slide. So he, here, here are my three goals for today, okay? It is all about you, okay? It is all about you and your story, okay? And you must let others know about it. Keeping it a secret is not helpful, okay? Also sharing your story both for you 
and most importantly, I think advocates. Having advocates is, is really essential. It certainly helped me. I think a very large percentage of, of uh, uh, recipients of donors find out about their recipient's need through an advocate. Okay? So make as many uh, connections with others that can help you spread the word. Advance. So here uh, is a uh, video program, free video program that I developed uh, when COVID started. Uh, I couldn't do any uh, 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 workshops anymore. So I put together this free video series. It is basically nine three minute uh, videos that walks you through in, in more detail some of the things we'll talk about today. It'll also provide you with many uh, supporting printed resources uh, that'll help you understand the process uh, a lot more than we'll talk about today. So let's, uh, let's play the, uh, the trailer. So I think you'll uh, be able to watch these videos, go back to one, skip one, go to another, and pass it on to, to your friends and family members. Send them the link and ask them to watch it, or you can even watch it with them, uh, because it's, a very, it's very powerful, um, uh, provides a tremendous amount of information, and I know you'll find it helpful. So let's go forward. Okay, so stories. Our lives are all about stories. This is what we do. It, it really is, whether it's a, a good restaurant or a bad restaurant or a good movie or a personal experience, that is our lives. It is all about stories. In fact, history thinks that uh, uh, stories allowed us to develop speech, okay, because we wanted to communicate with, with other people and share uh, the experiences uh, uh, you know, that we have in life. And donors connect, have to connect with their recipient. 96% of people donate to someone they know or heard about their recipient's need through some promotion or advertising or work that an advocate did to help spread the word. It's a very important number for you to think about because that's where you're going to get your success. We read a lot about that 4%, they're called non-directed donors, people who donate and don't know anyone in need of a transplant. And they're wonderful individuals, and there's no question, okay? But it's a very small percentage of living donations. So people connect with someone, that's why they donate. And the connection could be anything. It could be school, it could be a hobby, it could be a look on a photograph, it could be, you know, that you're, you know, both have dogs or something in your story. So it's important when you develop your story to be personal, okay, and express the things that are in your life, 
because you are looking for someone to connect with you in that way. Okay, next. Next, Anna. I have it. We're on the not asking someone to donate slide. Is that appearing for you? Nope, still on storytelling. Uh, hmm. Now I'm stuck. Try going back and forth. Yeah. Are you seeing any changes in the slides? Nope. Huh. Close the chat. Um, all right. I think the only choice would be for me to go to mine and read off of mine. I apologize for that. I am not sure why we're having so many technical difficulties today. <laughs> Harley, this is Kathy. If you need to find your slides or um, go out and come back in, that did work for me. It might take you longer to do that, though. Um, I can ask the group a question or something, or if you're ready to go, we'll try not to give you more pressure. See if I can open up. For some reason, uh, my PowerPoint closed also. Now I have that back, so let's. Right. So we're not uh, not asking someone to donate. Is that where you're at? Yes, sir. Okay. So remember that that is all about your story. OK, and communicating your need. OK, who do you tell and how often? The term that I use is everyone every day. OK, it needs to be top of mind. You need to be prepared because when someone says, hey, Joe, how are you? You have to be ready to really tell your story. Myths and misconceptions. I'm going to come back to this slide a little later. And you saw a little bit of that uh, uh, during the trailer, but these are extremely important because many people unfortunately don't understand living donation. We've done a, a very good job in educating the public about deceased donation, but we've done unfortunately not a good job in educating them about living donation. So maybe even some of these uh, might be, uh, you may not be uh, aware of. Uh, you know, many people think we have a spare because uh, we have two kidneys. No one really knows why we have two kidneys. Donors like to say so we can donate one, but uh, most of the uh, kidney conditions, mine included, uh, affect both kidneys. The two leading causes of kidney failure, uh, diabetes and hypertension, both affect, uh, they affect both kidneys. So it's not, not likely that someone has a spare in that sense, should they have a condition. Uh, you don't need two kidneys to have a normal life. Uh, one in 750 people are born with one kidney and their life expectancy is the same as someone born with two. You know, some women think they can't have children. Certainly they can. Uh, they should, you know, certainly inform their doctors. They'll be aware that they only have one kidney, but they can have uh, 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 give birth. Uh, some people think the donors take anti-rejection drugs. Uh, we do, being the recipients take them. Uh, I'm not sure why that uh, appears to be confusing. Uh, years ago, there was an age limit uh, of 60, 65 years old. You read about people in their 70s, uh, someone in their 80s recently uh, donated a kidney. It's not someone's age, it's their health. There are many people in their 20s that are not healthy enough to donate. So it's not someone's age, and that shouldn't discount them uh, immediately. 
Also, some people think, why should I even bother? Uh, you know, it's a one in a million that I'll be able to match or be uh, compatible uh, with the person in need. That's not the case at all. Talk a little bit more about medical technology and how that has changed and made it, uh, not that it's made it easier, but there are options available when you're not compatible. Um, also, uh, tattoos have become very popular. It's fine if you have a tattoo. And uh, certainly marijuana uh, is legal in many states right now. Um, and that will not stop someone from being a donor. So these myths and misconceptions, I'll talk a little later about how you can uh, use them. Uh, a little more on the you know, technical side. You may see uh, people uh, putting up signs or posting that they need a certain blood type. Uh, and blood type's important, there's no question uh, that blood type is important and you need to have a blood type compatible person. But it's my feeling that it's not something for you uh, to talk about at first, okay? Uh, it's the responsibility of the transplant center. They'll do the blood typing. Uh, Many people don't know their blood type, um, and some people say they're one blood type, they end up being another, so that isn't helpful. Um, and there's paired exchanges. In fact, paired exchanges is, uh, uh, other than a couple of the you know, more recent drugs that have come out uh, that have been helpful for recipients, it's really the only major change that has happened in the last 20 years. And it's, a, it's an important one for you to understand. So, let's see. so here's a, a, a simple diagram of a paired exchange. I'm using a two-way paired exchange. Um, I was involved in a three-way paired exchange. They've done five, 10, 20, believe it or not, 50-way paired exchanges over a couple of months and, and many transplant centers. Um, so what it is simply is you have a, a, a recipient uh, uh, that has a donor that's not compatible and they match them up with another incompatible pair, okay? Now, the, the concept is simple. Uh, about a third of all living kidney transplants now are paired exchanges. So it's a significant number of paired exchanges. And they will be, you will be able to read an article I wrote about paired exchanges uh, that's on the uh, Having Your Kidney Donor Find You uh, website and there's a lot more information about paired exchanges because it's not as simple as it might seem. Uh, many centers don't uh, offer the kind of paired exchanges that'll help you should you have an incompatible donor. So there's information there. Uh, please read up on it uh, more. And if you have questions, you can certainly uh, contact me uh, uh, about them. But they're somewhat complicated or could be complicated based upon your situation. So here's my story and I'll, I'll try to keep it uh, short. Um, and the next slide, it is not short, okay? So um, uh, people send me their story and it looks like this and I write them back and I say, I'm not going to read it because no one else is going to read it. You've got to keep it short. Okay, our attention span is just not there uh, in terms of reading things. So you really want to cut down on what you say, and here are some ideas on what you can do for your story. Uh, use bullets uh, instead of long sentences. Keep it simple uh, so people can read through it quickly. And here are some ideas that you can put uh, in your story, and uh, of course you want to personalize it more but uh, a kidney from a, a living donor is the best option, okay, uh, for, for people. The wait for a deceased donor in your area could be shorter than five years, could be, you know, closer to 10 years. Um, so so that, that is certainly a challenge and information you can provide. Uh, and a kidney from a living donor lasts on average twice as long as one from a deceased donor. Instead of eight years, about uh, uh, 17, 18 years. So it's a significant difference. Uh, you may be on dialysis, you want to avoid it or stop it, and I want to. And, and, and this is the personalization, okay? Whether it's you want to see grandchildren, you want to finish school, wh whatever your goals are, it's important for you to share that so people can, can read about it because it'll, it'll touch someone uh, for that. 
Uh, I mentioned advocates, extremely important uh, for helping spread the word. But sometimes, you know, they do more than that. They see other opportunities that you might. And unfortunately for us, when we need a kidney transplant, we often don't feel well. We're sick. We don't have the energy to do things. So having advocates is really important uh, for that. And they can help you, you know, navigate the system. Um, you know, it, it's not that this might be the best advocate, but you may get someone that steps up and, and uh, uh, to get evaluated to donate, and they find out they have a medical condition they're not able to donate. Okay. That person then can still help you by advocating on your behalf, and they have a great story to tell. Okay, I wanted to donate to Sue, but I can't. I have a medical condition. That's a very powerful statement to hear from somebody. So it's, a, 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 I think, a, a really good opportunity for that person to continue to help. So this whole idea of, of getting the word out, okay? If, if you think about it as one big idea and, and, and this is what you need to do, it's going to be a challenge. So what I do in the videos that are there and what I'm gonna do now is break it down a little bit, okay? And you can go after a couple of different areas instead of trying to do everything at once, okay? And if you have advocates, you can certainly get some help from them. So I've broken, I've broken it down into kind of four different areas uh, of pursuing uh, a living donor. Family, friends, email, using social media, meeting people every day, and getting creative. So you can latch on to one of them, uh, spend some time, or help uh, having an advocate uh, uh, help you uh, do that. So who to tell your story of family members and friends? I'm gonna encourage you to write down your story. And when I say write, I really do mean write with pen and paper. I don't mean type it out on a computer. When you write things, they'll be more personal. You will write things more from your heart than you will typing it on a, on a computer. Afterwards, fine, put it on a computer so you can uh, pass it around. But it's really important to have a lot of data on, on, on how people write. And if you are still in the little bit of an old world where you write thank you notes and send them in the mail, I think you'll appreciate the difference uh, between writing and typing. Uh, also, when you have your story out there, it's important for, uh, in, in my mind, for you to give two contact points. Obviously, you're going to be one, and the other would be the living donor coordinator at your transplant center. Either provide a phone number, an email address, or maybe they have a form, an initial form for donors to fill out. It gives that person an opportunity to pursue it without first speaking to you. Maybe they want some more information. Maybe they're not sure about it. They may have many other reasons. So give them, uh, uh, if you can, another contact point to do something. Uh, I encourage you to use a, a photo or a video. Um, uh, if you're using a photo, uh, uh, put a child in the photo. If you have children or grandchildren or even pets, okay? And make it, you know, casual. You may have noticed the photo in the opening where that I use today. I didn't use a formal uh, photo for this. I use something kind of casual, um, and it seems like that attracts people uh, a little more uh, than others. And then, you know, including, you know, kind of local or family members and friends, you've got all of these local opportunities that you've been in touch with before or you're continually in touch with, let it be schools, or religious, reunions, etc. Uh, you know, even libraries, uh, social clubs, they, they all have newsletters social or, or, or online, uh, uh, in, you know, uh, newsletters that they send out. Get your name in those and you'll expand uh, your, your universe of people knowing about your situation. So I put down this Google Alerts idea. If you want to read success stories, you can sign up for Google Alerts, okay, and put in keywords like living donation. Uh, uh, a kidney transplant, whatever your you know condition might be, you will get stories every single day of people either looking for a kidney transplant or success. I promise you, there'll be a dozen every day that you'll see. 
and it's good motivation to see both sides, people searching and people who are in need of kidney transplant and had success. So using email and social media, um, really important these days, uh, you know, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera. People say, ask me how often should I post on, on Facebook? You know, you, you, you post as often as you have something to say, okay? So, you, and that's the important part. Just posting and, 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 and saying something that's not kind of interesting isn't very helpful, okay? So you wanna give updates on yourself, updates on your health, things that are happening in your life uh, to, again, connect with people. But a couple times a week is certainly reasonable. Some people post, you know, almost every day. It's it's what your you know comfort level is uh, in terms of, of doing that. So there's a concept that I developed years ago. It's called Tuesdays with Harvey. Okay, um, and it's an email that goes out uh, every Tuesday. Okay, or every other Tuesday, whenever. In the subject line, it says Tuesdays with Harvey. Okay, and I give an update as to where I'm at in my campaign. And it's something that you can do also, okay? And it gives you the opportunity to, people start looking forward to your Tuesday's uh, information. And you can take information, you can just take a, a link to an article uh, that you found uh, online about uh, organ donation. You can even take those myths and misconceptions and explain them. And I have much more information on the website so you're able to do that. It's another way to continue to touch someone. Because I, one of the things I've asked donors over the years is when you heard about your recipient's uh, uh, need, did you respond immediately or did it take you some time? And, and more often than not, they say, uh, it took me some time. It was the second, the third, the fourth, the sixth month, you know, that they finally clicked, okay? So don't think just because someone has seen your information once, okay, that, that that's it and they've made the decision, you know, whatever that decision is. You know, in the marketing world, they say that, that uh, someone needs to see a product six, eight, 10, 12 times before they're going to take action. And I think this is similar in that way. You need to keep your, your name in front of them. Um, I encourage people to use a Facebook page and a website because they kind of perform different functions. Uh, website, you can put a lot of information on, where a Facebook page, you, you know, kind of get an announcement out there quickly. Uh, so uh, meeting people every day. And, uh, you know, thankfully the, the world is opening a little bit from, uh, from the pandemic. Uh, so you hopefully will be meeting more people and that meeting is really important. You need to be prepared to tell your story because when someone says, hi, how are you? They're giving you the floor, okay? And you often don't have but a second or two to respond. And if you miss that opportunity, it just, it may be gone, okay? So you need to be prepared when someone says, how are you, okay? It's an everyday experience, okay? People do it all the time, uh, but you need to be prepared, okay? And practice it. Okay, um, I've practiced, uh, you know, many times in front of a, uh, a mirror. I, I did this presentation when I first started in front of a mirror and practicing or in front of, a, you know, a friend or family member. Extremely important to practice so you're comfortable with what you're saying. So here's some ideas on getting creative and, you know, the sky's the limit. Uh, I only have one rule about being creative, and, and that is it needs to be legal, okay? I, I, people come up with crazy ideas, that's fine. Um, you just don't know what, what will work. So here are some ideas. Uh, I encourage you to get a, a business card printed. Uh, you may not be able to read this here, but uh, afterwards you can see it has my story in the back of the card. There's plenty of space uh, for you to put your story uh, in there. And it's important that you can just hand it out to someone and say, you know, I'm, I'm in need of a kidney transplant. You've chatted with them. Here's my story. Um, it also makes it a little easier for you to get uh, a conversation started because they may start to ask some questions. Car signs have become incredibly popular. 
Uh, you can get them printed uh, in many places, uh, back of the car, side of the car, um, you know, uh, standing on the corner uh, uh, may not be for everyone, but again, you're going to get, you know, exposure if that is something that you feel comfortable with doing. Um, you know, here's a wife doing it for the husband and the husband doing it for the wife. And you may look at it and say, boy, that that's way out there. And I'll agree with you. It is way out there, may not be comfortable doing it, but you're going to get a lot of exposure uh, from something like that. Uh, the typical uh, lawn signs are excellent. In fact, uh, this morning, someone sent me an email that I was helping. Uh, they put together an incredibly uh, uh, different lawn sign. Um, and and uh, I, it'll be on my next slides. If you want a picture of that to see how it is, email me and I'll, I'll send you a picture of it. Very creative way. Um, and they got their transplant uh, as a result of the lawn signs. So, you know, many different ways of, of doing it. Here's a picture of Louis Banda. Louis is someone who I helped pursue a transplant. And if you kind of squint your eyes, you can see to the right of Louis, he's at a, he's at a concert. Louis went to many, many concerts, many, many sports events, and always wore his sweatshirt or T-shirt. And that's where his donor found him um, at a concert. And, and she saw, he, he didn't know her, she saw uh, his sweatshirt that he was wearing at the time and um, ended up being uh, Lewis's donor. Lewis, as you'll see in the, having the kidney donor find you, uh, the series is in Spanish. Lewis did the Spanish version. So it is, it, it is a, amazing how uh, creative you can be and how determined you are to reach more people. When Lewis went to the concerts or any, any events, he would look for the uh, video cameras and he would go up to them and he would literally say, can you, can you put me on? And they often did. Um, and, you know, on a big screen at a place, he, he, was, he was really amazing, uh, the work that Lewis did to get a transplant. This was a, 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 a T-shirt that went viral years ago. So it was at the Disneyland. And thousands, hundreds of thousands of people uh, saw it. And uh, I have no explanation why it went viral. It was just a T-shirt. Um, who knows what makes something go viral? Um, but maybe you'll have that opportunity also. Uh, billboards have become uh, uh, very popular. You can do, there's a digital billboard company uh, that you can contact for a reasonable amount of money uh, doing a, a, a video billboard. Uh, they put them up in eight second uh, uh, spots uh, that, are, uh, that are there. So the name of it is Glip Billboards. You can give them a call. Um, and, and, and give that uh, a try also. Um, here's another billboard, but the, the, the reason I'm showing the, you this um, is often what happens, and that's what happened to the woman that sent me the information this morning. She had her lawn sign, and this person had a billboard, and a journalist wrote an article about it. So you're not only getting exposure from, from the billboard or t-shirt or whatever it is, you're getting exposure from an article. And so I encourage people, whatever they're using, send it to local journalists. They are looking for good human interest stories. And you have a good one, okay, when you're in need of a kidney transplant. Um, there's a, you know, the online uh, next door if you're using it. This is, I, 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 I feel a, one of the most creative things that I've seen in um, my heart still skips a beat every time I see it. It is such a heartwarming uh, uh, sign that's there. And uh, it's just, you know, kind of get the creative juices going and you can think of other ideas on helping getting the word out. Um, here's, you know, I encourage people to do a, a video. Years ago, I'd say, you know, five minutes maximum. Then I say three minutes maximum, okay? Even my trailer was a minute and 47 seconds. That's quite long uh, for people these days. So if you're going to do a video, keep it short, okay? And here's a short kind of cute video.
Can you play it? Not working. Anna? Yes, it's playing. It just ended. So great. So that's a minute. And that's a lot of information for someone to put together in a minute. So don't think you need three, five or 10 minutes uh, to express what what your situation is. Okay, it's a uh, concise and that is certainly very, very creative. Uh, also, in terms of creative, I, I want you to literally put this in a search engine. Craigslist ad, I need a kidney transplant. Put it in a search engine and see what you get. I think you'll be very surprised how many people have received the transplant by advertising on Craigslist. It's amazing, okay? You'll be scrolling for page after page after page, okay? So get creative. Think of I other ideas that you can do. And this whole campaign is something you've done before if you've ever looked for employment. There's a lot in common with looking for a job. Uh, on the front end, you know, no one wants to look for a job and no one wants to look for a kidney. And the similarities continue there, okay? It's all about your story, telling your story, uh, networking, getting other people to share your story. Okay, so it's kind of very similar. So, uh, you know, many people, I don't know if you know anyone, but I've met people over the years who lost their job and two months later, three months later, four months later, they haven't started looking for a job, okay? You need to grasp the reality of your situation and go after it. Research options, you know, learn as much as you can about organ donation so you can share it with others and help yourself in terms of educating yourself through the process. You know, learn about the, uh, learn about the options. It's, again, just like looking for employment, write out your story, just like a resume, okay? Networking, you know, uh, we've all met someone in an elevator, they just start talking, okay? And, and they're talking to you, telling your story or telling you something, okay? You have opportunities to do that. And the job interview is really just like telling your story. So you've had a similar experience in life. I, I can't encourage you enough to practice. You've got to continue to practice. Uh, uh, as you search, you know, the web or, or, or Facebook and you see something that someone has done, hey, take their idea, okay? Uh, or you read an article about it, take their idea. I encourage people to volunteer. It's a way to meet new people. Uh, uh, local organizations, fraternal, religious, meetups. There's, again, no shortage of, of opportunities that are out there for you to meet new people. Uh, I'll often, you know, get a call uh, or someone will tell me how lucky they got, okay? Uh, but really it is your luck is going to, you know, be dependent upon how hard you are working and or your advocates. So three important things. Learn as much as you can about living donation, because the more you know about a topic, the easier it is to talk about. It, okay? You'll feel more comfortable talking about it. So learn as much as you can. And advocates, extremely important, okay, extremely important for helping you in the, in the campaign and tell everyone about your situation. I firmly believe there's a kidney out there for you. There are good people in the world that want to help. We just have to tap them on the shoulder and tell our story so they can know the situation that we're in. Here's my contact information. Feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I'd welcome helping uh, anyone in, in any way that I can. And I'm still unable to see that page, so I don't know. Well, thank you so much, Harvey, for sharing all of those tips for people on how to 
how to find a, a, a living donor. Um, are there any questions? I have not seen any questions in the chat box. Um, if anyone has a question, um, now's a good time to ask. Um, while we're giving people a chance to think of their questions, Harvey, uh, a question I've heard a number of times is that people don't want to ask their adult children to donate a kidney. They'll say, oh, no, 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 I'm not going to ask somebody in my family, especially one of my kids. What, I mean, I know it's up to them, but what kind of response would you share with them? What, what I tell uh, people, I can't, you know, provide any uh, uh, kind of direction to the, you know, person who wants to donate or, or the recipient. Those are personal experiences. What I do encourage them to do is to read about the donor process, okay? Read about uh, some of the risks that are there and, and try to learn about, you know, uh, uh, those risks, uh, whether or not they're real or just in their head that they don't want to accept a, a donor from a family member, friend, uh, whoever it might be. I find that edu education really does help just them understand because they uh, may be under myths and misconceptions. So one of the uh, 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 challenges to overcome is, uh, 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 let's say, you know, a father doesn't want to accept uh, a kidney from a daughter or a son, you know, or a son because they have family members. Uh, you know, younger children that may need a, a transplant. If there's a genetic condition that's there, they probably won't let that child donate anyway. But there's an opportunity with, an or with many organizations, what they call a voucher system, where if I were to donate, okay, and if I needed a kidney at some point in the future, the system is set up now where uh, uh, they can get a deceased donor transplant, but with these vouchers, they can get a living donor transplant. So if I donated, I need a, a kidney in the future, I would be able to get one from a living donor or any of my family members if they needed a kidney. So sometimes that overcomes the challenge that, that uh, a family member might have for not wanting to accept uh, that gift. Thank you, that's a, a good point. Um, anybody else have a, a question for Harvey? Okay, I don't see any other questions. So um, at, at this point, Harvey, again, thank you. I appreciate um, your sharing all of your knowledge. I would also like to encourage people um, to take our, our, our uh, survey feedback form. Uh, only a few questions, but your input is extremely helpful to us. So if you please uh, check into that. I'd also like to encourage you to join us um, next month on November 17th at 2 p.m. Eastern to learn more about goals for home dialysis. Um, we also know that home patients also get transplants before in-center patients get transplants so in terms of being healthier, more ready for one. Um, so we hope that you can also join us next month. Um, and please, when you get the slides, go back, review them. Harvey has some links there to be able to see his material. Um, that he'll walk you through even more information on his website and through his program. So uh, thank you again, um, and thank you, Harvey. Thank you, Kathy. All right, thank you, everyone. Thank you for spending the hour with us, and I apologize for any of you who had technical difficulties, and please join us next month. Have a great day. Bye-bye.